our video. If you would like to download the free manual that follows along with this video, the link is in the description below. As an introduction to our scheduling training, I want to briefly talk about five limited resources. The five limited resources on construction projects include personnel, material, equipment, money, and time. Throughout this lesson, we will deal mostly with time. Since time is one of the most critical resources, once it's gone, you can't get it back. Project scheduling initially started with the bar chart or the Gantt chart. In this example, you can see each activity has two variables, their scope and time. The scope is a particular activity, an item of work that has to be accomplished. The time variable is the time frame that that scope of work will be performed. The critical path has three variables, their scope, time, and the third variable is logic. Logic is the relationships that each activity has in the network. Let's talk briefly about the critical path. I've been on projects in the field with project team members and asked the question, what is critical? Sometimes my answer is, everything's critical. In response, I usually say, if everything is critical, then probably nothing is critical. It's important to understand what's critical, truly critical, so you know how to prioritize your task. This is an example of a sequence of activities where a critical path is identifiable. You can see in this example, the sequence from subgrade through the electrical and plumbing underground and the slab on grade. The red items are obviously critical and you can see the plumber has two days of float. Understanding the float and who owns the float is one of the most important parts of a construction scheduling task. Let's talk a little bit about how the critical path is calculated. The computer will take this sequence of activities and it will start on day one and show the subgrade if it starts on Monday, for example, and finishes on day five or Friday. That means the subsequent activities can start on day six. The electrician, scheduled for five days, would finish on Friday. The plumber, scheduled for three days, would finish in six, seven, and day eight. If both activities are done by 10, the slab on grade can start on day 11 and finish on day 15, the third week. Now, what the scheduling software will do will start with the very last activity or any activity that does not have a successor and will begin counting backwards with 15. And if that activity is gonna finish on 15, then it has to start on day 11. If it's gonna start on day 11, then those previous two activities both have to finish by day 10. And if the electrical is going to finish by day 10, then it will have to start on day 6. The plumber, if it's going to finish on day 10, he will have to start on day 8. The subgrade will have to finish on day 5 and start on day 1. The computer then will take these numbers and take the difference between either the start or finish. The slab on grade, the difference in the finish is zero or zero float. The electrician, the difference in the finish, zero float. The plumber, the difference between eight and 10 is two days of float, and the subgrade has zero days of float. This is important to understand. This will help you prioritize. This will help you identify at the end of the day what activities are impacting your project, what activities are not impacting the end date of your project. Don't forget to like and subscribe, share with your colleagues, and leave a comment. We'll get back to you as soon as possible.